Welcome to Hydrogeology 101 Pumping Tests. Today I want to talk about the team equation, which governs groundwater flow to pumping wells under steady state conditions in confined aquifers. Here is our little schematic of a confined aquifer, so that's this blue area here, which is sandwiched in between an upper and a lower confining unit of low permeability. We have a fully penetrating pumping well in the middle, and around this well we have a cone of depression in the piezometric surface. So it's not a real uh, water level, you'll only see it if you drill a couple of observation wells into the confined aquifer and this is the elevation to which our water level will rise in the observation well. If we look at it in three dimensions, we can imagine that it will look a bit like this. We have our well here in the middle and then we have here an inner radius represented by our first observation well and an outer radius represented by our second observation well. The groundwater will flow towards our pumping well from all directions. So it's radial flows coming from all directions towards the well at the center and you can see it's represented by a few arrows here and as we go through the inner radius the groundwater flow will start to speed up a bit because what happens is that the same quantity of water has to pass through smaller and smaller sections of the aquifer. Don't forget that we're in steady state so that means that the amount of water passing through the outer radius is the same as the one passing through the inner radius and it's also the same as what actually enters our well. In previous videos we talked about Darcy's law, Q equals KIA. And I want you to pay particular attention to the A part of it, because previously we looked at Darcy's law in respect to sections through the aquifer which had a length and a thickness. What we're going to do now is take this section and wrap it around our pumping well so that the radius is this uh, R here. Okay, so basically if you think of this outer radius here, it's just a long strip of aquifer that has been wrapped around the pumping well, which is in the center. So we can calculate the area of our strip, or rather our circular strip, by taking the perimeter of a circle, 2 pi r, and timesing it by the thickness b. Now we can combine these two equations, so our area here times by k times by i will be our discharge. At our outer radius, at r2, our discharge will be 2 pi r2 times by b times by k times by i2. i2 is the hydraulic gradient at this location. So basically it's a line drawn at tangent to the uh, cone of depression at this location. Now because we have steady state, the discharge at the outer radius will be the same as the discharge at the inner radius. What I'd like you to notice is that b and k are constants, they don't change, our aqua thickness doesn't change. What this means is that the only thing which is changing is r and i, so the distance from the uh, pumping well, r, is of course much larger at the outer radius than at the inner radius. So the only way that you can maintain the same discharge is if the gradient becomes larger as we approach our pumping well. And this is the reason why we have a cone of depression. As we get closer and closer to the pumping well, the hydraulic gradient has to increase to maintain the same flow. Now, our cone of depression is not a nice straight line, it's got a curve to it, so it gets a little bit more complicated and we have to write it in this differential form which after integration we end up with this equation which is called a team equation of 1906 for steady state flow to wells in confined aquifers. 
It's not a complicated equation. Basically, you just take 2 pi times by aqua transmissivity times by the difference in drawdown between two locations, any two locations along our cone of depression, divided by the natural logarithm of the outer radius divided by the inner radius. Often we don't know the exact elevation of our observation wells, so what we can do is just take the difference in drawdown. So um, you notice it was h2 minus h1 here, but we do s1 minus s2 because we don't want to have a negative number. We just want the difference in the drawdown. So this is our equation if you have drawdowns only. Okay, let's illustrate this with a practical example. Um, let's go to Kabul, Afghanistan, and my regards to everybody there who is suffering from coronavirus at the moment. I hope you make it and that we can meet again soon. Um, okay, so let's go ahead. My first question is, how much water can we extract from a well in the, low, in the lower neogen aquifer if we want to limit our drawdown in the well to 50 meters? I should say there, there is a deep aquifer beneath Kabul that was studied for five years by a Japanese team paid by JICA. So here is our schematic of the aquifer. And basically what we want to know is what is the discharge, Q, for a drawdown of 50 meters in the well. Notice that we'll use SW for drawdown in the well instead of S1. So in our team equation, what we need to know is what's the difference between S1 and S2. S1 here becomes SW. And for S2, what we're going to use is the radius of influence of the well, at which point S2 will be zero. Okay, so our equation simplifies a bit. It's just 2 pi t SW divided by the log n of the radius of influence divided by the radius of the well. Now, we know what pi is. We don't know what the transmissivity t is. SW is 50 meters, as specified before. Our radius of influence, if arbitrarily taken, 1,000 meters. Our radius of a well, let's assume it's 10 centimeters, 0.1 of a meter. And to summarize, in order to find this discharge for a drawdown of 50 meters, we just need to find out what is the transmissivity. So earlier I went to Google and I typed in Neogen, Kabul, JICA. And the second hit here is the 2011 JICA study on a study of groundwater resources potential in Kabul Basin in the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan. And in the executive summary, we read that the lower neogene consists of clay, gravel, sands, gravels, and conglomerates. It's pretty thick, 252 meters, 159 meters. However, the transmissivity was very low, only 8 meters squared per day on average. So that's not a lot. Let's plug it into our equation. So here our missing number, transmissivity of 8 meters squared per day. If we plug it into our equation, we get 2 times pi times by transmissivity times by the drawdown in the well divided by log n of the radius of influence divided by the radius of the well and we end up with 273 cubic meters per day. Question number two. What does the cone of depression in the piezometric surface look like? Illustrate with a graph. So this is the graph that we want to make, but uh, let's go first to the team calculator, which is the little tool I made in Excel. So you can probably recognize our diagram of the uh, confined act for here. And if we move down, we can see the team equations and also the key assumptions, which are very important. Don't ever forget that the team equation only applies if all these assumptions are uh, correct. So I've already entered the inner radius, uh, the radius of the well, 0.1 meter, the outer radius, 1,000 meters, and then we have to add the head of the inner radius and outer radius so that uh, the drawdown here is 50 meters. Now I've just put in 1500, but I could easily have put in, for example, zero here 
and 50 here, it has the same effect. We just want to end up with 50 meters of drawdown uh, at our inner radius. Okay, so uh, let's add the aqua transmissivity. Watch this space carefully as I enter the 8 here, enter, and up pops our transmissivity. This is a label that has a live link to this label field here. Now, if we look down at our calculations, there are enough parameters now to calculate the well discharge based on the team equation, and uh, we can feed this back into our parameter table equals Q enter and then you will see that um, all the other parameters have been calculated as well and uh, it should be the same as what we have here. Okay, um, here is our discharge, you can see it here and also on the right is a chart of the cone of depression. Let me quickly go down to the table where it's calculated. We have here a variety of radiuses between our well and the radius of influence. And in this column here will be calculated the um, H number for each of those locations based on this equation here. And from the hydraulic head, we calculate the drawdown. Very simply, it's the difference between the outer radius head and our calculated head. And then this, uh, these numbers are fed into our chart here. You'll notice that there is a very, very steep cone of depression as we go closer to the well, which means that it has a low transmissivity. In fact, if we go here, at 200 meters, we still have a drawdown of 8.74 meters. That means that if we're pumping from the Neogene, you'd have a quite a big influence on any wells in the area. Okay, let's have a look at our third question. What are the conclusions about developing the lower Neogene aquifer? If we go back to the JICA report, they conclude with um, the potential of groundwater development of the deep aquifer is not high even for emergency purpose. So I think we can fully agree with this conclusion. The lower Neogene aquifer is really not suitable for development as a water supply source for Kabul city and mostly because you have such huge drawdowns for very small discharges and big drawdowns means high energy costs which means that the cost of the water will become very high indeed. Okay, so that's it for this little video. I'm going to make another one for unconfined aquifers shortly, and I hope that you watch that also. I hope you enjoy this video, and thank you very much for your attention.